What's going on smart people? Today I'm continuing my studying for my classical mechanics exam. Today is Sunday, the exam is on Tuesday, and I'm changing up the way that I'm studying a little bit and that I'm really emphasizing doing problems from the book, the exercises, because the Goldstein Classical Mechanics textbook just has all of the solutions already worked online, so I'm trying to work through not every single one of them, but every single one of them that looks like something my professor could ask, because I'm not entirely convinced that he won't ask something straight from the Goldstein book itself. So the more that I solve, the more likely it is possibly that I will solve something that he will ask on the exam in the first place. Not to mention, this class is really one big old class of deriving classical mechanics from first principles. So it's kind of difficult to make sure that you're well equipped to answer problems, actual problems, when your homeworks themselves are only like four questions each. So doing the exercises from the book is also just a good way of letting me know that I know how to actually apply this stuff to real problems. Yesterday's video was pretty short because I really didn't have time to make a video and get studying done at the same time without it also just interrupting everything. But yesterday I went through the derivation of the Lagrange equations of motion using D'Alembert's principle. Deriving it using Hamilton's principle is super easy. D'Alembert's principle, it's just there's so many expansions of certain terms that I wouldn't have thought to do myself and now it makes more sense but that whole derivation just, it, it's weird for me. I don't quite grasp why the hell you introduce things like virtual displacement and virtual work. I, I don't really get it at a fundamental level. I understand how to apply it but as of right now, it just seems like physicists needed something analogous to the variation in the calculus of variations. I don't really get it at this point, but I am meeting with my professor tomorrow because I emailed him saying, I don't really get it. Can you explain it better to me? Uh, because the book just says it's an instantaneous uh, change of a coordinate while holding time constant. I'm like, I don't, okay, sure, sure it is. I also emailed him because there was a section on the syllabus, or I guess what could be on the exam, and I was like, hey, you didn't, we didn't actually cover this in class. How much should I emphasize studying this? He emailed me back saying, oh, skip that. So that's cool. Remember kids, always email your professor if you're not sure how important a topic is that they say the exam might cover. But right now what I'm doing is I'm finishing up non-holonomic equa non equations of constraint. Really just making sure that if you have a system that is constrained a certain way, how to describe that with an equation, how to describe those constraints. So for example, on the whiteboard behind me, don't know how well you can see that, but it's a problem where you have two disks that are connected with an axis whose wheels can move independently and constructing the equations of constraint for that kind of a system. I'm hoping to get to orbits by the end of the day, that way I can spend all of tomorrow going over orbits and, and the central force problem because that's probably my weakest point right now. Turn that weak point into a strong point, am I right? The only thing that really sucks about studying classical mechanics is when you're considering like things like kinetic energy or just Lagrangians as a whole, you're assuming it's functions of position, or let's call it generalized coordinates, velocities, and time. So when you take derivatives, you end up having to take derivatives. Basically what I'm getting at is you have to use chain rule a bunch of times for every single problem. So the problems blow up, so there's really no short problems in this class so far. So the exercises, no matter how simple they are, still turn, turn out to be like pretty tedious problems. But because these problems are just taking much longer than I thought that they would, because all of them are just really, really long, I think I need to start to be more selective with the ones that I want to solve, because I, I frankly, I just don't have the time to solve all of them just because they take too long. Uh, so I'm going to start filtering out what really are good problems and, and hope that that's the way to be going about this. I'm still feeling pretty good with the material, but you know, I, I wish I just had a bit more time to problem solve. Classical mechanics is just one of those courses where it's too easy to come up with a really difficult problem that can still be solved on paper, like your system is moving, but also rotating, and then also telescoping in and out, and why not add friction as well, and do it in spherical, like you can just make it as complicated as you want, and that's just something that you don't really see in a lot of other classes, but you can still be expected to solve it all in a relatively short amount of time. There's just a huge variety of problems that you need to be prepared to solve, which makes classical mechanics pretty intimidating to study for, which is why I've always said that classical mechanics is one of the more difficult physics classes, that in thermo and stat mech, but I think that I'm doing everything that I need to be doing. I'm going to get back to it. Let me know in the comments section how all of your studies are going. I'll see you tomorrow.